Wait, are you guys seeing? I can't see anything. Oh, poor Conrad. Oh, no. no. (laughs) This goes to show what a great actor Conrad is with having no technical skills and playing such a brilliant one on TV. Welcome to a very special episode of Cow Surfing. All good things must come to an end, and how to get away with murder is saying goodbye after six killer seasons. So we decided to take a stroll back through some of our favorite moments from this series. Joining me on my journey from isolation are stars Asia Naomi King, Jack Fallahy, and Conrad Rickamora, and the show's creator, Pete Nowak. Hey, gang, how's everyone doing? Hey. Hey, good. good. How are you? <laughs> hey. <laughs> expected. How are you all holding up? I know these are very challenging times. How are you all doing? I'm doing well. Uh, I'm grateful for, <laughs> for my health and, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I love opportunities like this uh, to see everyone. I've actually been watching the show just so I can see people's faces because I miss them. <laughs> I, I don't oh, usually watch yeah. the show because I get self-conscious. So, um, But yeah, just you know, practicing gratitude every day as much as I can. All right. Well, you know you're going to have to watch a lot of this show <laughs> for the next you know, half an hour. So let's start at the beginning. You guys ready? Let's do it. Yeah. What happened after Mr. Kaufman's wife of 27 years, Agnes, found out about the affair? Oh, boy. You. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, Pete, it's one thing to write a script, but it's another thing to see that script actually come to life. I mean, what goes through your mind when you look back at this episode? I mean, this is I the mean, very beginning. You know, you can see it on my face watching this. I'm just smiling because what, and it brings back so many memories. I feel like I grew up so much. So I'm like watching your baby faces on screen guys and i'm like oh we all grew up together so yeah it's actually kind of a strangely emotional yeah because you write a script and you're like oh i mean i wrote it here in this house probably at this table i'm at right now and then you watch it come to life in this major way and i'm I'm just yeah i'm proud of it i'm really happy to be here with these people and watch it again it's just so fun (laughs) it's fun right yay You know, know. these classroom oh. these classroom scenes add so much character to the show and so much texture. What do you each remember most about shooting from this day specifically? I was terrified. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, this show is like really my first rodeo. Um, and I remember being very intimidated. Asia and I sort of, sort of talked about this. the Because this was one of our first shooting days, but there's a table read... Yeah. You know, in Philadelphia before you start filming. And this is after everyone's been cast, but it's the first time as a cast you're going to sit down and read the pilot together. And, you know, Shonda was uh, conference calling in from LA, and there were all these producers on the line. And Asia pulled me aside and she's like, just so you know, you can still get fired. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, she's like, I know you haven't done this, but like, you have, it she's like, you have to deliver in this table read. And people get Asia, why would you, reads all even the time, true, I was preparing you him. That? No, I'm, I'm glad she, honestly. Hey, we all brought our A game to that yeah. table read. So. Asia, you kind of sound like your character, Michaela. <laughs> no, she was she was much sweeter than Michaela. Very, you mean very yeah. supportive and encouraging others yes, to exactly. achieve things. She was, exactly. she was yes. looking out. You guys ready to move on to our next clip? This is sure, fun. Sure. Very beginning. Up next. It was fun. Who are you? Um, Oliver. <laughs> it's an honor to meet you, Mrs. Professor. Keating, Mrs. Keating. You're the man that's constantly saving our asses. It's nothing really, I just... Oh, it's something to me. Thank you for your hard work. (laughs) On, (laughs) Rad! Oh, gosh. There you are. Was that your first scene with Viola? I think so, yeah. Now, when you're starring opposite the legendary Viola Davis, is there a moment when you levitate outside of your body and you think to yourself, I cannot believe I'm here right now? I thought I would be nervous, but uh, she is so kind of real when you meet her. Like, she, she's, there's no airs about her. <laughs> she doesn't put on any airs. Uh, and that's, like, really uh, just 
kind of brings you back down and puts your feet on the ground, I think, because it's the person that you that I, for me, the person that I've been watching in movie theaters uh, for years, all of a sudden was just very, very human. And that made me not nervous at all. But, you know, up until that point, Oliver wasn't in Annalise's orbit. So did you know that you would be here for the long haul? That I would know. I thought, I mean, that's, it's so funny to hear Jack talk about how nervous uh, he was because like, I wasn't nervous at all. Cause I was like, Oh, I got an episode on a TV show. <laughs> um, even though I'd never done a TV show before, like I just thought I was doing one episode and then going back to my theater job in New York. Uh, and so like, I'm so kind of grateful the way that I was introduced to this whole process. Cause I never had nerves. I didn't have to screen test. I did one audition for a casting director and his assistant. And that tape like circulated all through ABC. Um, and I never had to like meet with executives or anything like that. So like I was spared so much anxiety uh, <laughs> at the beginning. Yeah. And then all of a sudden in season three, I was moved to L.A. Welcome back to Couchsurfing. I'm still here with Pete Nowalk, Asia Naomi King, Jack Fallahy, and Conrad Rickamora. You guys ready to see some more How to Get Away with Murder? Yes, please. Yeah! <laughs> Shoot me in the leg. You can do this. Connor, please, please. Put the gun. Don't, don't, yeah. don't. Yeah. Connor, no. Shut up. No. <laughs> no. Wow. Okay, there's so much emotion and adrenaline in this scene. Yeah. How do you keep that up, take after take? <laughs> Intense. Oh, I think I think we all almost like screamed ourselves hoarse that night because we were doing that scene over and over again so intensely. Like, but man, like I remember the feeling of shooting the scene. We were so in it. Like we were really yeah. like, like, let's Your go, let's do the scene. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, I think that was one of the most fun things about the show. Is is you know, these scenes where the writing allows us to just sort of like really act and like let let loose. Um, and I think that we were all so fortunate to have real life chemistry with one another that I think translates pretty well to the screen. So we would just sort of have this, you know, ping pong effect off of each other and, and constantly elevate each other's performances. So it never felt tiring even though we'd be shooting this for you know hours and hours and hours and yelling and yelling and yelling i mean the show started the pilot started with the four of these younger actors and i remember you guys at the read-through like delivered like right from the like first line you were all like screaming at each other in the read-through which doesn't happen a lot like i think it's because asia you put the fear of god in them clearly um <laughs> But you it, can still get fired. Be clear, yeah. everybody. <laughs> Which really helps because, well, here's the thing. I could have gotten fired too. Like you, like you saved my butt too. Every, she's Asia is very right out there. Everyone watching, you can get fired at any second. I don't care who you are. Um, but uh, yeah, no, they brought that. And so like, just like knowing that was my first time, like having you all in a room and seeing you do the roles together. So like watching this scene, I'm so glad you played it. Cause I think it's probably the best, like, operatic crazy scene because right. there's so many of you and it goes on forever and i'm like oh god it's really good like i don't say the writing's good i'm like the your performances are so good that's the best part about writing tv or coming up with something like this is like when you're like this is so redonkadonks and they made it so <laughs> real yeah um and you're just i like only want to write stuff like that from now on all right up next that's not real love that oh, is just no. some severe, <laughs> messed up emotional damage that you've been carrying around with you since the day I met you. I mean, this relationship really was good? the definition of tumultuous. <laughs> Did you both <laughs> think this was going to be the end here? It was always a moving target, I think, Connor and mm -hmm. Oliver, which, which made it real, you know? Like, relationships are messy and, you know, you throw in <laughs> uh, murder charges <laughs> and... Yeah. Uh, you know, an HIV diagnosis and infidelity and all of these other things that these guys struggled with. Um, and it makes it that much more real 
and messier, but I think it also is a testament to their love for one another. Pete, when did you decide that this was going to be the central romantic relationship, like the Ross and Rachel of the show? Oh, that's such a good comparison. I'm so flattered. No, um, I didn't decide. I didn't plan to have Connor in like a relationship for sure, because I felt like that was against his character. And then watching the two of them together is what I just kept following. Um, and I remember like, you know, you make a pilot and then you meet with writers and everyone would come in and be like, I just love them together. And I was like, oh, and they're like, he's coming back, right? I was like, oh, like, you know, it, you're like, well, yeah. And then it really grew into something. But it was this is like the fun of a, being a writer on TV versus writing novels is you're collaborating with people. You're watching what they're giving you. And that's like a rare chemistry that you can't plan for. And so I, I just followed it. But it was a lot of, um, you know, catharsis in writing right. it because it is you know, you don't see like, you don't, if you're not dating when you're a teenager, you kind of miss a lot of the building blocks when you're in your 20s. And then you throw the murder on top of it. And it's just good drama. <laughs> He's already dead. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, you have to leave. What? If your dad knows you were here, oh he'll figure out how to you are. I mean, <laughs> a, 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 Asia, do you ever get used to that blood? I mean, no. I mean, like, <laughs> it's just everywhere. Your you had to wear that dress. That, is destroyed. You had to wear that dress and that blood for almost for like almost two for like weeks. a month. It was <laughs> like it felt like forever, and they kept throwing more and more blood <laughs> on me, and it was just like stop it. And then when we shot the scene. They had to get a guy with like a <laughs> slingshot of blood aimed at my <laughs> face to make it all work. And I was like, why? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> I remember this specific scene took like two, two and a half days. And I lost my voice and I was just yeah. like, I can't. And like, you know, you do it, you do it. I mean, to going back to the scene that you guys were talking about with Viola and like, you, you know, it's like not real, but then you just become depressed for like a really long time after <laughs> yeah. doing yes. it because like, because you, your body you, doesn't know that you're pretending. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. So you do have a physical response to this. Yes. Way. You're, you're, yes. you're so into it. You're tensing yourself so much. You're so mm -hmm. committed. You're living in this circumstance, of course. And like when you when you're trying to like walk away from it, your body is just like, oh my god, I've been through this intense trauma. Like, <laughs> even if you psychologically, know? like you start thinking, you know, if you're talking like really actory, like you you start being like, all right, I'm just gonna do this physically. I'm not gonna get into it emotionally. I'm just gonna manipulate myself physically. It still gets into you. Yeah, you can't dial that in, and you can't be yeah. emotionally detached when you're doing that yeah. type of work. Yeah, even if they move the camera, even when the camera's not on you, you're still in this collective where people are relying on you to give them that same mm -hmm. impetus so that their performance can match the coverage that was done on your side. So it's like, it's just, I mean, it's it was really intense. Pete loves to write very intense scenes. <laughs> I know, you all get to go do a comedy or something now for like, <laughs> go do a sitcom for like seven years and you can uh, shake it out. But. Exactly. All right, up next. Where the hell did you go? Oh, oh my gosh. Grand gesture. So here it is. What would I do without your smart mouth? Coming in and you're kicking me out. Got my head spinning. No kidding. I can't. Yes, I can love on. that scene. <laughs> oh. Comrade, you have a beautiful voice. Yes, he Thanks. does. Thanks. Well, I've, yeah, I've been on Broadway and musicals. I, I, and know. <laughs> I know, I know, but it's just, yeah, I mean. Nominated it's like, for it's a like, Grammy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. They're like, let me just yeah. drop this Grammy bomb on you really quickly. Right. <laughs> Were you excited, nervous to perform this scene, a bit of both? I mean, walk me through how uh, you're well, feeling when I you mean, were. We recorded the song, um, the whole history of the, because like, Pete, 
came and saw Soft Power, which just was a finalist for a Pulitzer, so um, which is incredible. Uh, but uh, he saw it a few months before, and then he was like, I, th- uh, I think I want you to sing at the well, wedding. I got to give credit to like Daniel Robinson, who's one of our writers. Like, so it was like, you know, he had saw, seen Soft Power too, but his, it was his pitch to put it at the wedding. Anyway, Aww. it was your pitch to um, sing this song and speak specifically and it was so brilliant i remember thinking like you know when you sing in front of an audience on stage they're all paying there to (laughs) to watch you in a story (laughs) and then singing in front of like your colleagues and then all of these other extras that are just that are in the scene as well it reminded me of having to do like juries in college and sing in front of like professors where they're just judging you and they're not really like. <laughs> Although I will say we, after like the third or fourth season, some of the cast, we went to Santa Barbara for like a little mm-hmm. staycation and there was a wedding happening in this hotel and Conrad and Asia commandeered the piano <laughs> and performed at these people's wedding and I've never been so mortified in my life. I was like, this is this is so embarrassing. And I ended up walking out of the hotel and I was back and Conrad and Angel are just like ah, 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 ah. <laughs> So I don't know what this whole charade about like I don't want to perform in non paying customers. <laughs> but they loved it. They were uh, like they, they sat they down. Loved it. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Rewind, rewind. Jack, do you remember what song they sang? It was Creep, right? By Radiohead? Yeah. Yes. I mean, it was like a really dark song. Yeah, uh, it was like a super oh. dark song. I was like, this is the... But it sounded <laughs> so pretty when we did it. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm still here strolling through six seasons of How to Get Away with Murder with Pete Nowak, Asia Naomi King, Jack Fallahy, and Conrad Rickamora. Hey guys, shall we continue? Yeah, let's do it. Can't wait. I'm testifying. Same one. The same thing you are. Which is? Rat. If you don't start talking, (laughs) I will scream bloody murder. Okay, before we get violent, can we say hi to Christopher? Don't make me look at him, Oliver. It's too late, I'm going in. Hi, little fishy. Oh, the baby. It's so big. How are you going to do that? (laughs) Asher told the FBI that I called you that night. They were able to pay my location. I like your hair, Asia. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, so this is the first time you all see Laurel again, which is delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, why are you laughing, Asia? <laughs> oh, because it was just like, you're back, you're back. And we're so happy and like celebrating the whole day. And it's like, okay, now let's do the scene where we're mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we're all apart, we're lucky enough to have this technology to connect us. How are you guys planning to celebrate the finale? Will there be like a house party, a Zoom party? I guess this is the celebration. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're doing we're doing like a little we're doing a, a little something something, right? I think we're yeah, we're trying to whoever's available. Like this is yeah. a good way to plan it, honestly. Like I'm not the best party planner, but we should um definitely All right. like well, between let's, let's the, make it the, happen. The, Who do you let's like let's play yeah. it right now. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should Lola, play you'll it. plan it. Yeah. I'll right. get the karaoke machine. Everyone wear their blood on their I'm face. I'm sure I'm yes. sure Amira Amira is planning something. Yeah. Oh my god. She's, right. Right. She's incredible. She's incredible. She's incredible. She's great. She's been she's been like running the How to Get with Murder page and just like <laughs> coordinating all these amazing Instagram live interviews videos with all of us. And, yeah. Yeah. Interviews. There's like 24 so hours great. of content that she made in like truly, less like, than 24 gosh. hours. Yeah. She needs her own talk show. She's, <laughs> yeah. she's like seriously. Yeah. She's incredible. I think I kept saying like if anyone needs a spinoff, it's Tegan. Like <sighs> like I just Love. yeah. I yes. think there's a lot there, and she's so she's such a great actor and yeah. the, the character is so great too yeah i love her before i let you guys go please give me your final thoughts about this series um i think i'm still very much in denial that it's over like because this is normally when we would have a break from shooting anyways so i think come june july like when we're supposed to be like back and filming and on the lot and hanging out together and coming in and out of each other's trailers and all that stuff, like when that's not happening, <laughs> when we're 
then then it might hit me that it's really over. It just, it doesn't, it hasn't sunk in for me. I'm like, it's not done. I still talk to everyone often. Yeah. Like we're... <laughs> I've been I've been watching a lot of TV during quarantine, <laughs> like a lot of people. Um, yeah. And it's made me realize just how fortunate we were to get six seasons of storytelling. Um, so I've just been very grateful for that and that, you know, ABC gave us this space to finish the show, which doesn't mm-hmm. happen very often. Like so many things I've watched uh, during quarantine just like abruptly end. And you can yeah. tell that they the 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 cord got uh, you know uh, mm-hmm. pulled, and they they didn't know that it was coming. And so, yeah, I'm grateful that Pete and the writers were given the runway to sort of come to this definitive uh, conclusion. Because I, I do think it's that the fans sort of deserve that. You know, they've been supporting the show, and and to give them this this send off, I think is is awesome. So I'm excited to see what people think about it. It's all just felt so lucky. Like even the fact that we did get to finish right before the lockdown and the quarantine. Right. Like yeah. and like Jack said, like every character, I hope, and I think all of you guys agree with this, had their arc like completed and yes. like this part of their life. And that's what feels satisfying about having written it and now watching it, um, is that we really got to tell a complete story and like yeah. I'm spoiled that way. I'll never be able to um not do that and um yeah but we're all like we all have a ton of ahead of us so we're all just gonna work together lots more (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. you all thank you so much for surfing by this was fantastic thank you thank Thank you you. thank Thank you you. thank you thank you for doing it thank you for being here the entire series of how to get away with murder is now available to stream and see you next week on couch surfing (laughs) bye everyone Bye. Bye. bye